So Josh and Kelly, I'm really glad that you took a second to hang out with me. Um, you know, uh, I gotta admit, I can fanboy a little bit because I have been following your work for a while and um, through your products is actually was uh, the, the first I had thought about amending with all natural ingredients um, back several years ago now. Yeah. Um, but because of that, I've known the two of you as 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 living soil uh, kind of educators, right? And that you know they all kind of come together, living soil and permaculture and just general healthy living, right? And um, you know now that I have the opportunity to interview people about probiotics and probiotic growing of cannabis, um, you know I see what I think is a, a kind of a new rise in, in probiotics and living soil and KNF, which is taking off and everybody wants to talk about. But I don't, I don't have the depth that you two go back, you know, you know decades or maybe more, right? Yeah. And so um, I wanted to get your perspective. What are you two seeing um, from you know, traveling to teach and your customer feedback and, and just what you also get from living, I think between um, Nelson in Canada and Southern Oregon. So you get, you've got a really good perspective. So, so what are you seeing as far as like this, what I'm experiencing as this, this, this massive increase in probiotic cannabis interest? Yeah, great. we've been uh, thinking of it as, uh, and talking about it with some, some colleagues and lady at uh, Julia Skunk Magazine is really awesome. We've been talking about it as like a green renaissance. Mm -hmm. Some people like to say the green rush, but it's like not a rush. It's a, it's a, it's a renaissance because in a way, all these years we've been like myceliating underneath the earth and just working on our web and our connections and making it all right and make sure we all have the right food. And in a way, it's like a fruiting of all of our knowledge right now. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing um, an amazing amount of farms making the transform uh, the transformation into natural farming and also we're seeing the system come out with a lot of uh, stopping points for pesticides and a lot of testing that's kind of almost making you know synthetic growing uh, um, dangerous and not, yeah. not you know, it might be failing products and stuff so um, what do and you I, see? Well I also think that you know we're we're not believing the myth anymore of big ag, of big pharma, of big corporations. And we are starting to question that. And it is giving not only educational flow to people, but it's also freeing them from like these ideologies that we used to have. And I think that, you know, the, the growing that Josh and I have been partaking in for 25 years is so in now because it involves health and it involves like breaking that myth of being taught that only an NPK is the only way yeah. that you can <laughs> feed your plants, which is like touch such a joke as well as, you know, a pharmacies are the only way that you can treat your ailments. So it's been really fantastic seeing people question. And I think that, you know, once you're given like a really big sort of bad idea, then it's making people question it and people are questioning it and then they're using it in their own gardens and they're like, oh my God, this is totally amazing. So I think that, you know, it's, it's the right time. And I, I, also, I also think, sorry, is that I think that, um, it's leading by example too. It's not needing. It's not needing to, to force, you know, a way on someone or anything. It's just saying, hey, this is the way we're doing it, and it resonates. And people, you know, try the ganja. They they see the differences. The lab reports. Everything shows that the natural systems are the better way to go. So, the leading by example, and then the proof sort of coming out in the pudding with the laboratories. It kind of solidifies it that this this is what's to invest in. It must feel kind of uh, pretty miraculous to you guys for, for doing, you know, you know, 25 years ago, right, when you started this, um, people were all like, you know, NPK, synthetics, oh, what, what kind of hippie stuff are you guys talking about? And now, over the course of time, I would think that instead of you trying to push it on others, people are coming, not, not that you pushed it on yeah. others, but you being there as a resource, right? Yeah. Uh, instead of that, people are coming to you, it's like, please teach me, right? Yeah. Yeah. That must be kind of astonishing. It's really, we're incredibly humbled by it because, yeah. you know, we never put ourselves out there to be, you know, um, a leader or an educator. It just became, it just became natural and it was something that we felt like we had to offer and it resonated with people and we're seeing big changes on the farm. So yes, it, it's, it's amazing to see the growth of it. And for us, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. There's so much doom and gloom in the world. Yeah. There's so many things that are just vortexing into yeah. a dark hole. So. I just want to believe that there is hope there and, and it's not just wanting to believe there is hope and, and this yes. is the hope, you know, and so it, it, it to, to have something positive to grab onto it, that's where the true change comes from. Inspiration equals change. Forcing 
ideologies on someone, it can create opposition, and that's it not what we're resistance. looking for. Yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah. And I think since we've been doing it so long, we know that it works. And so, like Josh said, you know, it's showing people our flowers or our huge vegetables, or you know, taking soil test samples and just seeing, wow, we've got everything that we need there in order to grow great crops. And yeah, just so many years into it, you know, we've had lots of failures. We've had lots of successes. We've 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 really tweaked our recipes and we've come up with like a lot of our own fermenting that works for us in our zone in our area and what kind of plants can we pull out and what what, what can we use in nature or what can we grow in our own gar gardens to create that herbal biomass that you know if you're nutrient deficient in a specific nutrient in your soil then what is it that you can grow to help bring you know that into your soils and there's been a lot of trial and error to get to where we are yeah. and and that's where the groundbreaking part comes right because you know a lot of times when this information is not available because you know when you all started learning this the the internet didn't make the information possible right mm -hmm. so you'd run into somebody over the course of moving yourself around the world and you're like oh my gosh this person told me it yeah. and then you go and you try it yourself for you know a few mm -hmm. seasons every which way and then now you've got your own best practice you were inventing your own best practices and, and that's, that's a, a huge deal it is and we have traveled the world quite quite a lot in our relationship we've been together for 25 years over 25 years now yeah. and we have a 21 year old child and we've traveled the world the whole time we've done disaster relief we've worked with women and children and birth We've seen how nutrition affects women and babies and placentas. We've seen how nutrition affects the food, which makes the women maybe even, they may be eating a lot, but they're malnourished. So nutrition and, and well-being has been a major part of our life. And so for having it all come together in one kind of modality right now is, is incredibly powerful. We also know that with you know, compounds like Dacamba and the defoliating agents that are out in the world right now, we're losing millions of acres every year to contaminants. We are charged up and inspired. Like we, we would almost like give up sleeping and eating if we had to, just to continue to put the message out there that yeah. there is a different way. We can survive and thrive on this earth without these degenerate systems. So and to bring uh, invest it, into it. Yeah, right. And to bring it back to the cannabis industry, it really fits into what it is that we're doing because there's so many people that have to reduce their costs. In order to stay in this industry, the big corporate yeah. guys that are in the big takeovers and they're doing a lot of NPK, well, they're bringing down the price per gram so much mm -hmm. that our focus is now on small farmers to be able to stay in the game and reducing your impact on the earth reducing your impact on how much you're spending really comes from nature so how can you make stone soup yeah <laughs> you know right. it really is it's a stone soup and we came up with a lot of different recipes off of nothing and Josh was talking about yeah. you know going to different areas and opening up clinics well we were having to start clinics with nothing what is it that we can take from the area and the region and the zones that we're in to create something amazing, to create a soup that can nourish everyone? And how taking a bit of a Moringa tree and just putting it into hot water and having them drink Moringa tea can totally change their health and well-being, you know, of, of, of people. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a passion. It's yeah, a passion. right on, right on. So, um, one of the things that <clears throat> inspired me of y'all is that you are active educators, right? Like um, you, you don't miss an opportunity to both both share your uh, successes and and how you got there, um, and and so you're speaking all over the place. And for a lot of us, you know, we are learning about uh, probiotic gardening in all of its forms. Um, online, right? You know, f you know, you know, uh, either you know websites or forums like the Probiotic Farmers Alliance on mm -hmm. Facebook, where people are coming together to share information, and that's awesome, right? Because we can rapid prototype ideas really fast mm -hmm. when you've got when you've got well, like like Probiotic Farmers Alliance, thirty thousand people, right? Maybe maybe that's a little bit too big, but point being, a lot of people working together can can hone down a question really quickly and get to an answer. It also in these days when everybody's all stressed out, there's more people flaming each other online, and <laughs> and it's it's difficult to learn in some of these environments now, and and I'm continually trying to support or you know encourage people to keep teaching each other right because um, when 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 the internet sites are filled with arguments everybody just wants to to walk away right and and that might be good sometimes to take a break from a lot of the political stuff 
But learning about how to take better care of ourselves, to grow better cannabis plants, to grow better food, we don't necessarily really want to take a break from that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts about, you know, the kind of idea of like each one teach one, where 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 yourselves as leaders, uh, thought leaders in the in the probiotic and cannabis growing community, and me because I have you know access to an audience. What are, what are your thoughts about uh, what? everybody should be doing to continually make sure we're teaching each other. Well, I think it's really interesting that first off, what, what sparks me is that there's a differentiation even in our language between the word health and happiness. Why is it that health and happiness are two separate words? And I really feel like when we're gaining uh, information or we're gaining health through a information out there I think that it's incredibly important that it also makes you happy yeah that's true yeah. you know it needs to make you feel good so the information that we always put out is something that's gonna make people feel good and it's also gonna give you health so if we didn't separate those two words of health and happiness then we really might not even be in this predicament mm -hmm. so I really encourage people to continue to find education and about health and well-being through what makes you happy right. If you're seeing something on the internet that's not making you happy it's probably not healthy either mm -hmm. so you know really be drawn to whatever makes you feel good and uh, you know we we like to draw wisdom from our elders because yeah. you know we're just one cog in the yeah. whole wheel and you know we have a lot to learn still and um, Bob Snodgrass you know is, is a part you know close family member of ours and you know his big teaching which I think is a, is a beautiful thing to say is that he really believes that there's a bell curve to um, consciousness and to understanding of things. And he, you know, when he created the, the glass pipes with the, the gold and the silver, he created something that was magical. And instead of keeping that secret to himself and making a million dollars and not teaching anyone, his algebra teacher taught him that, you know, humanity is learning at a really slow rate. And as soon as everyone starts teaching each other, consciousness rises. And it rises up, and we all grow. And it's it, like the hundredth monkey idea, it right? Is. Exactly. Yeah. It is. So we, you know, we've taken that similar type of approach. You know, we yeah. we are in the middle of our evolution. We're learning and growing as we as we um, you know as we grow older. And we think that it's really powerful to be able to share that message and to not create divisiveness on the internet. I think is really a, a really important thing. You don't have to put out something and react to someone's answer if someone's gonna come at you or whether they're a troll or whether they're someone that doesn't believe in you that's okay yeah also, that, that's also known as conversation and if you don't have the right words to come out and prove that what you know you're saying is right then hey challenge yourself find the right the right words yeah. but but don't don't take it as a stifling thing let's let's move forward let's all share our information because that's what's getting us where we're going and we're moving pretty fast right now with our knowledge yeah. and also the buddhists say I, I just love this that there's only two emotions and all emotions are based under these two and that's love and fear mm. So if there's anger that's coming out on the internet or something that you feel angry with yourself, then there's some kind of a fear that you really need to address to turn that into love because love is the happiness, love is the health, and love, that, that's where we all need to end up. So really encouraging people to, to, to go with the love and, and let go of the fear. And, the, and I'd also like to say, you know, that's an, a big reason why we created the Pure Certification, which is an was created because there was no organic certification and it seemed like there was just product going onto the shelf with no actual you know form of accountability you know there was like how do you prove that that's good there's no system involved so we thought you know well the USDA is and the and, and modern agriculture has never been something to you know to learn from because there's so many broken things in there so you know we're gonna make something that's different we're gonna say this is all organic and, the, and it meets all the USDA standards by getting toxicity reports and soil yeah. tests and water tests. The farmer would do that on their own. Why do they need to pay someone to tell them what they're doing is right? So we've created a format where it's like a an each one teach one type of a situation where you know we put a format out and it's it's a it's a community monitored, community supported um, uh, certification. So we we've said here's all the things that we know this is why closed loops matter because it's health it's well-being you, you know what's going in your yeah. products you, there's no surprises afterwards and it's empowering it's empowering to say oh look at that tree it's filled with calcium or it has trace minerals because it has really deep roots you know um, part of our traveling was going to Hawaii and learning about natural farming and, and a long time ago we learned about natural farming and we're living on the land and we started looking at biodynamics and Rudolf Steiner, like, oh, the horns in the ground are 
almost like the same as IMOs and well that's because people that are connected to the earth are getting the same type of information mm -hmm. and maybe a different form a different moda modality of teaching so we never said we're only KNF or we're only natural farming or we're only permaculture or we're only biodynamics we're all of it we're humus You're beings. You're pro-life. We're humus yeah. beings. We come from the earth and we take out cigarette butts when they're, when they're there. <laughs> and, and also and the thing with the peer certification that Josh didn't mention that I think is really important is that there's, you know, we have over 85 farms that are jumping on this because they were already on that path. And maybe people now are saying, oh, I want to do this. And now I'm really inspired through love, through health, through mm -hmm. happiness to better my practices on my farm. So there's so many people that, you know, like us who have been growing for, you know, three decades that were like, hey, I fit right into this. I have already been doing that. And then it starts to create a higher consciousness. And then you've got like your bell curve that Josh was talking about. And once you have more and more people, then it does shoot right up because everybody is on the same intention. Mm -hmm. And our intention here is healthy, pure cannabis. One of the everyone. things that I like that you uh, you both espouse is this idea of, 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 of sharing all the information and yeah. then letting people choose for themselves. Yeah. And one of the things that I like is that y'all share everything that's in your products, right? Mm -hmm. And we're in this time where a lot of people are trying to monetize yeah. intellectual property, right? Mm -hmm. I won't let you t know my trade secret, right? Or I have SOPs for extraction, but because our oil looks so good, I'm not gonna tell you, right? And like, I'm, I'm you know, I don't own this IP oh. yet. I'm all like, all right. <laughs> information yours to be free, right? Let's do this. So, so um, what have you learned from your own example of sharing your inputs? Because a lot of people would be afraid to write exactly what's in the product on the bottle because they're like, oh, someone's going to copy me. But I know that you have shared your inputs and Dragonfly Earth Medicine has thrived. So, mm -hmm. so what's been your experience with essentially giving, a, giving it away and then still being able to sell your product? Well, people coming back to us who have used our recipes and given us flowers that blow me away. Oh, right. <laughs> that right there is like number one. It's been so totally amazing. And then they're just really excited. And they also say, my health has also improved. Yeah. My flowers and my growing has improved and my health has improved. And I've gotten off all of these different pharmaceuticals just because I tried out your recipe. Because they trusted it. Because yeah. they yeah. knew what was yeah. in the... And we're like, go ahead. Yeah. It's and awesome. You know, we've done different businesses throughout the years. And we never felt like someone taking our idea was a direct challenge to us yeah. we felt like we're very innovative people we're very charged up we're wanting to learn all the time if all of a sudden someone all of a sudden 10 companies come out with a bunch of micronized herbs and bacteria awesome awesome and if everybody's selling give, them it's like thanks. awesome Great. more people get now to all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. we got people all over the place that yeah. invented it yeah, yeah. You know, right. <laughs> awesome that's a that's a that's a point of, of uh it's a it's a compliment it's a compliment yeah, yeah. And so maybe we have to continue to challenge ourselves to come up with a new innovative product. One innovative product may not be enough for the world to make mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, Dragonfly Earth Medicine is unique. We recognize, um, you know, that we're sharing everything and, and people haven't taken it. And, yeah. and even if yeah. they do, then maybe they'll just be an imposter that's trying to do the yeah. same thing. Whatever it is, it really doesn't matter to us yeah. because just like um, you know, sharing everything. If more and more people are doing it, it's just a positive thing to the yeah. earth. Because we, more and we more don't people have to yeah. be the yeah. only ones that know everything. Yeah. We don't want to be that yeah. person. We don't and we're writing that. a book. So yeah. we've been writing a book for like three years, maybe even four now. <laughs> more and more information. More and more like you know, uh, exciting ideas come up. So we'll be sharing that and. Hopefully people will take it and run with it and utilize it and maybe write a book off of that. And I think shared information is how we can better our humanity. Right on. Well, thank you both for your leadership and a little bit of time that you were able to give me today. Thank you so much. And, uh, and, uh, and for anybody else who wants to f uh, find their um, uh, products, you're at dragonflyearthmedicine.com. Yes. And Correct. we also have dempurefarms.com, which highlights the pure certification, what a closed loop system is and all the farms that are impl um, implementing these, uh, these actions. Right on, cool. Thank you Thank both. you so Thank much you. Right for on. having us. Right on.